All right, Chase Concepcion is here. Shea Serrano is yeah. here. I would say this is one of Shea's five favorite movies ever. Absolutely. You have a poster in your office. I have a I have a framed poster. Listen, I bought a poster off of Amazon. It was fifteen dollars. Oh, that's stealing. And then I got it framed. Yeah. It was four hundred dollars. <laughs> and I absolutely it was like you gotta protect sure, that thing. <laughs> sure, I will pay four hundred dollars to frame and mat this poster. I also have an autographed picture for, of Chong Lee from oh. Bloodsport. Oh. And, and a framed picture of Jean Claude Van Damme from Bloodsport. Was he? Uh, did he autograph it as Chung Lee or as, as Bolo Leung? Uh, it's scribbled on there. Somebody mailed it's it just, to my office, and I fell in love with it. Wow, that's wow. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, how many times since 1988 have you been flicking channels and stumbled oh, over at least 30 minutes? This, of this is movie? a Cinemax classic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cinemax action classic. I feel like, um, as a person who would stay up late at night, I feel like you'd see this two to three times a month between the hours of 11 and 2 a.m. on Cinemax on a random Friday night. I wrote in 2014, what's the record for most times watching Bloodsport, even though it's not even showing on a movie network, but a local network where they keep interrupting with bad commercials? That's really became its legacy about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It would just pop on, you know, Spike. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Spike's a good channel. No, but you'd be like, ah, shit, that... There's going to be commercials. Mm -hmm. I already own this on DVD or Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch it you anyway. you got to watch and it. And you're sitting through the Spike commercials for a movie you have on DVD. Sometimes the commercials make it better. And I don't know how that works, but Breaks sometimes they do. You just like, you get to be excited about a thing. And I don't know why it works that way. It's like if you get a junior bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's, it comes with tomato on it already. I hate tomatoes. Yeah. But I order it with a tomato just because I don't know why it's better. It makes you appreciate the part of the burger you actually like. I think yeah. that's what it is. Do they make movies like this anymore, Jason? This specific type of movie? No. They don't make uh, martial arts action movies starring uh, weird <laughs> bodybuilding <laughs> Belgians anymore. Uh, they don't They don't really make this kind of movie anymore. Certainly not, not for, it feels like not for like an American market. Well, the thing that strikes me as I watched it for the 137th time two nights ago, they feel like they're actually fighting in every scene. And I just come off from seeing Hobbs and Shaw, which Hobbs and Shaw is the classic. It carefully right, rehearsed, right. punch, punch, turn, punch, punch. Everything's like this. And in Bud's part, I'm like, did that guy actually die when Chung, Wong, Chung Lee knocked him out? Like, <laughs> is he really dead? Is there, did anybody write about him? Like, I have no idea what happened to those guys. Did the one guy break his leg? Oh, Were they, how much of it was real and that fake? That was real. The broken leg. You think it was he real? signed up for it? They said we have They're to break just your like, leg. You got to let Bolo <laughs> like, okay. stomp on your femur. <laughs> no, but they it, didn't have stuntmen for the movie. No, that was like not a thing. And I know the Wait. the one guy. Really? No, really? Wait, are you messing with me? No, because I, I feel gotta, like you're making fun. I got to. I got to talk about one scene where I think that there's a stuntman, but I'll let you continue. The the one part in the movie when Jean Claude Van Damme elbows the guy in the mouth and knocks his tooth out, like that really happened. Damn. Yeah, and he really got hurt in yeah. that situation. But yeah, there were no no stuntmen. They were just going for it. So when when Frank is running from uh, Rollins and Helmer, right? Yeah, and they fall into the disgusting waters like around Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. I will swear to you that is not from behind. That's not Forrest Whitaker. It can't. It's. I feel like he was just <laughs> like, I don't care who you get to do this, but I'm not getting in the toxic water. Mm -hmm. Good move. Like, That's why he ended up winning an Oscar. I studied the, I that. I think he scene got in the time. water, and that's why he got an Oscar. <laughs> he would have been nominated for this movie. It was like, yeah, yeah. this um, was it was worse than Leo sleeping inside the bear in the Revenant. Like, I, I don't he understand to it. <laughs> the Revenant. I I don't understand why they don't do fight scenes like this anymore. And maybe it's just the degree of difficulty is too high. Maybe you do. We're going to get into it, but they're like some of the greatest fighters of this era. Because you had in Victory the soccer movie with Sly Stallone. Mm -hmm. They ended up using like some of the greatest soccer players from the early 80s in that movie mm -hmm. and Sly Stallone and Michael Caine, which is what's <laughs> one of the funny things about it. In this movie, they're really getting some of the best guys. And then uh, the guy who plays Chong Lee is the Enter the Dragon guy. And there's just a level of, this is not like, hey, The Rock, we're going to teach you some moves. Right. These are dudes that have been fighting since they were like nine. I can't speak for Van Damme. I don't know when he started. I know he started the splits probably early. You got you to do that early to, when they to build him, up that When he was born, they just yeah. set him down in the splits <laughs> automatically. There's so much to love in this movie, and we're going to get through all of it. And I almost just want to get to the categories. But it's a montage movie, ultimately. And yes. I feel like that's what 
we're missing now as we head toward the end of this decade is the art of the montage is just out. Like, I again, Hobbs and Shaw. They have a montage in it. They do have a montage, and it's fun. And yeah. it's like, guess what? I'm always going to enjoy a montage. Yeah. Like, Karate Kid. That's a great point. When he knocks out that first kid or wins. And it starts. And, yeah, and, yeah. It, and there's like, you're the best, Daniel. And then Joe Esposito <laughs> comes in. <laughs> and it's like, this could go on forever. Yeah, yeah. I would watch a whole movie that was just a montage. Right, right, right. You know what else is great about that that kind of style, that structure? This movie is a brisk minute. Uh, hour 32 minutes yeah it's just, it's brisk it's brisk yeah it just flies by and Hobbs and Shaw is like how long is that movie like two three and a half hours no come on no no no, no but it's like two it's 15. long it's too long yeah they needed 40 minutes to set up the fact that these guys weren't going to get along but they had to <laughs> right <laughs> Bloodsport it's like there's a tournament people die let's go yeah, yeah. here we go they're cleaning the stadium they're wiping the blood off making the mat nice and Nice clean. All right, let's talk about Van Damme because when I did my action hero championship belt, I don't think I ever gave him the belt. But is he, that, he is occupies. That, is that how you pronounce it too? Van Damme? Van Damme? I've I always Van just, Damme. I've always Van said Damme? Van Damme. Me too. But that's just. I'll you're, say you're Van out, Damme. You're outvoted two to one. Sorry. I think he <laughs> says Van Damme. That's okay. He, he also says Van a bunch Damme. of other weird shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> so his IMDb, he goes here, Bloodsport. Black Eagle and Cyborg. Any sure. thoughts on those? 1989. Cyborg, thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Black Eagle was, he was barely Kickboxer. In it. Love Kickboxer. Thumbs good one. up. Really yeah. good one. Super hardcore though. Lionheart, yeah. Death Warrant, Double Impact. At some point, it just became a joke with the, even the titles of the Van Damme movie, Van Damme, Van Damme, <laughs> Universal Soldier, <laughs> Nowhere to Run. Universal Soldier is the best split. You think so? Which one is, which one do you like? I, split. I didn't I, know we do this this early. Oh, actually. Is that a category? Should we hold it? Should, maybe we okay, yeah, we'll hold it. Let's hold it. Let's, <laughs> let's hold that split. But then around like 93 range, he kind of went up a level. And I thought his acting actually got better too. Mm. But He, he does has gotten better every year. Hard, ta hard Target, Time Cop, Street Fighter. And then my favorite one other than this one, Sudden Death. Mm -hmm. I really like Sudden Death. It's a good and one. It's, I arguably a hockey movie. There's long hockey scenes, but he ends up playing goalie, mm -hmm. which is in just the incredible leap of faith of any '90s action movie. He puts on the equipment and plays goal and goes for it in a Stanley Cup game for the Penguins. <laughs> it's huge. It's it's seemingly being televised. They don't care, but uh, but yeah, at some point he just kind of became poor man's Schwarzenegger, right? Is that mm -hmm. fair? I think Where do you so. have him? How do you have him ranked in the Pantheon? Well, oh. I I think. If we're just doing like personal preference, he's number one for me. He's mm. he's number he's my guy. one. Wow. Yeah, 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 Over yeah. Arnold. Over Arnold, definitely. Really, really. I mean, I'm I, shocked by this. Arnold has better movies. Uh, you know, Predator, um, fucking Running Man, Total Recall, Commando, yeah. Total. Like he's it, it, his. You can't argue his IMDb page. He's he's got the the better movies. But if we're just talking about. We're gonna make a movie. And we're gonna drop some guys in it. Who do you want to see? I always want to see Van Damme. Over, over everybody. Or Van Damme. Or Van Damme, either one, Van Damme. Either one of them. Either one of them. Give me either one. But I think I think he's just a little bit cooler. I think he's he's definitely more handsome, which is like, I like that part. Um, I just feel more drawn to him. Mm. He occupies the same place in the late 80s, early 90s that Chuck Norris had before him, where it's like, all right, we have enough money for one actor, one star. And the rest of the movie really doesn't matter. And you kind of know the beats of it each time. And you can put him on a poster and people will come. And that was the case, whether it was people going to the theater or renting the movie for eight years from yeah. now. Yeah. Until and the Dennis Rodman movie, it kind of started to flip. That was probably a mistake. <laughs> I, and I really like about him that he's like a fighter. Schwarzenegger's not a fighter. Schwarzenegger's just going to fucking yeah, pound he's you. Big. That's yeah, I was he trying is. to think what made me love Van Damme. It's there was kind of a wow factor with some of his stuff. There's where, a flair. Yeah. yeah, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Stallone and Rocky Four, I guess, when he's doing some of the training stuff where it's like, yeah. wow, Jesus. Stallone is above Schwarzenegger too, for sure. Yeah. But Van Damme, like that scene when he's in the rope doing the split and mm -hmm. then and his mentor is like <laughs> cranking it. I mean, it. when he's when it's he's fucking between, incredible. When he's between the chairs, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. just like, what the Hell? Are you serious? Yeah. You've never I mean, seen some of this stuff in movies before. It's really incredible. And he really came along at a time, too, when it was like that kind of really incredibly uh, muscular, super physique kind of action star was 
kind of getting pushed aside because of like the diehard movement, you know, and yeah. like the normal guy kind of action star, like Christian Slater and Broken Arrow, that yeah. kind of shit. Yeah, a, that's a good call. There's like, if you're not ready right. for like Bruce Willis to be your action hero, yeah. try this guy. He's Get a slightly Van Damme. smaller Stallone. Right. And he really, he he thrived in that era. Um, like, he, he really came up as, at the same time as like Seagal, who, Seagal is just so ground bound and like stationary. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. He's, his moves are all Seagal. like the guy comes at him and then he spins him around, but he never moves. His legs never move. Mm -hmm. Van Damme's flying all over the place doing splits. He's like rolling. He's jumping up in the air. He's jumping over the ref. Very just, athletic. There's a lot to watch. I always felt like Seagal was like the Dwight Howard of action heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain yeah, this? Big I physical, <laughs> kind of stiff. He was going to get to 20 and 15. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I don't know if you could win the title with him, but I, you know, you could definitely make the finals with him. Yeah. yeah. But you could, you can if win he's the fighting Van Damme, I just feel like Van Damme's killing him. Yeah. The smart thing that he did was he was like, oh, you know what I should do? I'm going to be the guy who breaks your arm. Yeah, I'm going to break your arm. That's That'll be me. And that's all he did for right. his whole career. I'm going to break your arm or I'm going to flip you into like a soda machine. Yeah. He he was just moving his hands a bunch and you yeah. thought he was doing some shit. Right. He was just doing this while you're standing in front of him. You're like, oh, he's about to do something. Right. And then he fucking grab you and snap your arm. I think from an unintentional comedy standpoint, you could make real strong cases for either. It's kind of the bird magic of unintentional comedy mm -hmm. in the late 80s, early 90s. Seagal had the fucking ridiculous ponytail. Yeah, the and ponytail was he's tough. he's dressing in the karate robes and just really trying to act in this like yeah. low thing. And poor Van Damme just couldn't act. It got better as it went along. But mm -hmm. in Bloodsport, you're watching it going... How do they not do like one more take of this? Song? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> how did they get yeah. directors like cut? You know, got it. Got Here's it. That, you know it. You know that it's an issue when uh, Donald Gibb is blowing, blowing Van Damme He's off really the good. screen, ogre, blowing him off the screen. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting there going, Man, why did Donald Gibb get more run? He's Why good he, in the movie. He's, he's great good. in the movie. Look, if we to tie this back to Schwarzenegger, I felt the same way when you watch um, Escape Plan. And it's Schwarzenegger and Stallone finally. Yeah. And Stallone is like actually acting and Schwarzenegger is just a fucking cardboard cutout and his mouth is moving. Right. The same thing here. But yeah, Gib is Gib is good. Like during a video game scene. I love that scene. Like, Wait a minute. Hold on. Is he is he doing this? Let's get to the categories because we have too much to discuss. Yeah, yeah, um yeah. budget of around two million made sixty five somehow. Damn. Sixty five million dollars. Yeah. That's also like Solid. I feel like that two million is like inflated. Like a lot of that went into like shady pockets. I feel like yeah, when yeah, they yeah. filmed that in Hong it was, Kong. Yeah, it was really like probably like five million. <laughs> yeah, two million and then three million under the table. It made sixty five million. It's I can't imagine how much it's made in cable residuals and mm -hmm. stuff like that. This is a movie. It's that's a hundred million dollar movie. This and Roadhouse have been on for thirty <laughs> solid years. Yes. Unabated. Roadhouse is on right now. It's on like Cinemax or Showtime. When's, when is that rewatch? It just will never end. When is Cocktail, that? these movies from the late 80s, they've just had now had three decade long runs. All right. So most rewatchable scene. Oh. I basically just put down the script for the movie. Okay. Yeah. But um I'm just go in order here. The opening credits are really great. Yes. Because it's got it's got the the music kind of gets you into it. It sets it up and it has. A, I wrote down all these things I liked. And Bolo Young, 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 I Young, think it's Young. Bolo Young is Chong Lee, where he gets you know in movie credits where the last guy. It's like a little extra special. Mm -hmm. yeah. They give him that little shine. They show the different guys warming up, and Chong Lee is just kicking giant ice blocks. Yes, just, just to get ready, absolutely mm -hmm. destroying them. Yeah, like how long does it take to get a giant ice block ready and then <laughs> carry it over and hang it? Like two hours? Not seven as, hours? Yeah, yeah. Chung is like, yeah, set that up. It. Boom, boom, boom. Knocks him out. Um, the guy who, he jumps on a tree. Yeah. And they cut to him running. And then he, and it's like the worst cut ever. And then he's on the tree and there's coconuts now. He's yeah. chopping. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. The monkey guy. There's a guy doing MMA in front of this group of, they seem like island natives. They're holding <laughs> torches and they're just kind of cheering them on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on there. And then it cuts to Ogre as Ray Jackson. And he's like, I heard you can get killed in that kumite. And Ray Jackson's like, oh, really? And so they set him up. And then it cuts to that. Who, how would you describe the giant guy who ends up bear hug killing that one guy? Oh, man, that was. What's, 
What do we call him? Giant bear, giant smiling bear hug guy. That's that's his name listed on the IMDb page. <laughs> yeah. The I'm, cut I'm to looking him, at it right now. He's just throwing something heavy that bowls two guys over, and then he's yeah. like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he's got that. And then down. He's got that incredible move where he just takes a guy and breaks his back yeah. like yeah. over his knee, mm-hmm. like he's snapping a twig. Yeah. yeah. Why are you smiling? You're a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> so that just sets the tone. We get to meet everybody. Uh, I don't know. I don't want. I can't think of much more I'd want from opening credits. No, I no. We're gonna make a lot of fun of about the movie. Like it, it's kind of a bad movie when you're like really watching uh-huh. it. Be careful. But they do some really really smart things when they're making the movie. This is like really powerful storytelling. Just setting you up with all the pieces. You're like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know all of these guys. I'm gonna see them. We'll be later seeing them on, again, and they're yeah. gonna be substantial characters. And my guess is that ice block guy is gonna be a factor. And they're the they're, guy who's <laughs> crushing ice blocks with the karate. And they're getting kick. like the fighting arena ready. And like, oh, this is where they're all going. I get it. I understand now. Yeah. So the next one I have, I just really like young JVD for some reason when he's training with the blindfolds and, and the ways of they're doing the, the rope, yeah. the rope. Mm-hmm. I call it, I wrote it down as rope. Jesus cross is that, okay. I don't know what else we would call it, but, uh, uh, and then he's like, <laughs> and pulls himself up and it cuts to the mentor going, he's, he's impressed. Was that what you were supposed to do in that uh, situation? I don't know. Are you supposed to pull yourself back up? I think he invented that one. I know. I, I'm not really sure what the end game to that was supposed to be. Uh, the real Frank Dukes said that this this like device is a real thing called is called drawn and quartered, and like he said, he's, <laughs> that's the problem. He said that they put him in it for real and like whatever. But yeah, I would like one of those machines. What happens to normal people who are in that machine? You're just every you groin just, muscle tears immediately. Just, you split in half like your a legs fucking, come off. Like when you do the chopsticks and you just pull them. Like yeah, that's what they, that's what happens to your body, up to your chin. You're just dangling <laughs> like that. It's got to be like top five on the set. People must have been like, yeah. Why are we doing Whoa. this? Also, why, like, is this guy gonna die? Yeah, and also, can we ins- like, how, how do you ensure this? Mm-hmm. You're like, we're forcing children into splits. <laughs> is well, he, this, is, okay? this is this well, is he's also, and yeah, but like, can we like, is this okay? Like, they're implying that they did it as yeah, children, yeah. which is a lot. They do the same thing uh, in a uh, kickboxer, except they lay him down. He's on his back, and they're cranking him. Hmm. Next one is um. Do you like the mentor, by the way? Is that the kind of mentor you'd want? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They borrowed him from seven different movies that we could probably list right now, including I think he was in Enter the Dragon. He was the mentor. Um, this is a small scene, but I like JVD's invitation being honored by breaking the bottom brick and the yes. five brick yeah. stack. Very cool. I think it's just a really important scene. I love in the movie and in, in the movies when they like establish, like we, we have to do a thing to show you how cool this guy is. And that's what they do with him. Yeah. And Ray Jackson reacts like he just like unwrapped a plasma TV or something. Yeah, it's, like, Whoa! it's pretty impressive. It is. When but Chung Lee, not impressed. Not at all. When you watch it, even now when, when I, I just rewatched it right before we recorded this, and they do that, it's like a cool shot from the bottom up. And you see the face that Jean-Claude Van Damme makes. His eyes get gigantic and he's yeah. like, Rah! boom! And then the brick explodes. And you're like, I, th- I think he really did that. You like know the- they, even now, I feel like he probably... I think he really did that. I think that. he did that. You know, the thing about the bricks, though, brick no fight back. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. I mean, but still, I don't want to fight a brick. How would, physically, how would that work? How did that, how did that move work? Busting those bricks like that. How do you, how do you I do think it? You're just quickly putting so much pressure that that bottom brick's just like, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> this is some sort of law I'm of out. physics. Right. Yeah. I'm sure. It's like the, the transfer of energy. Jason, how would you compare Von Dom mm-hmm. to Eleven and Seven when when she has to make shit move around? Well, obviously Von Dom much more impressive because that's just that's just the physical power embodied within him that has nothing to do with uh, you know cutting edge science experiments or you know interdimensional. So Eleven forces. had some PD help. You yeah, think? absolutely, some yeah. help. Um, some cutting edge help, multi billion dollar uh, weapons program help. Jean Claude Van Damme, that's all. That's all. That's all him. And we're blowing right past the fact that he hit the top brick, and that one didn't break. <laughs> right, he, or the second, well, or the third. The force down. He just. That's do, really impressive. Do you watch Stranger Things, Shay? I do. Do you want to see my impression of Eleven in I, season I, three? I don't. Oh God. But go for it. That's it. That's all I got. You think she Thanks. could? I would Thanks, also, Shay. if I was, couldn't she also like 
telekinetically hold the blood in? She, you would think. You can only do so much stuff. There's if you're gonna, also, if carry you're gonna a shoot, handkerchief. shoot a car into the sky. Can we like carry we, a handkerchief? Or put a, put a piece of toilet paper up yeah, there. Yeah, just, just block something. it. Uh, next rewatchable scene. Y'all are really taking for granted the fact that she's moving stuff with I her know. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, calling this rewatchable almost isn't fair to the montage. The first round of fights. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Where you really get a feel for, oh, okay. So the people are there. There's the weird council over here. What do we call them? I the, don't know if they're part of the Black Dragon Fighting Society or not. Are they there? They're, they're there as a, like, the executive council of, right, right. of representatives, whatever. And then the really cool ring that kind of bends down, and then everybody's just fighting in there for like six minutes. And mm -hmm. we have Ray Jackson wins his first one, and then taunts Chong Lee. Yeah, well, listen, but, I, tactical error. This is don't wake up the sleeping. Giant. I disagree. Presaging uh, Mountain and the Viper from Game of Thrones. Mm. Listen, when you when you get that win, when it's in sight, you got to finish. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Ray? Well, mm -hmm. you're doing, this is later. This That's, is later. I don't yeah, I'm, saying, talking but about, I'm talking about the first fight. It's still, it just bothers me so much. Just finish he, the job. Finish the job. No, yeah. I, I like him talking shit immediately. You like him setting the tone with Chong Li, I'm not afraid I, he of you. Won. Because Chong Li did it first. Yeah, that's true. When, when, they, when Frank broke the brick, Chong Li starts brick talking no shit. Back. Ray already knows. Ray Jackson knows. Like, this is part of his game. This is, he's a shit talker. Let me see what happens when I go at him. And oh, he yeah. looked a little nervous. Are we a sure he should have been called Ray Jackson? What? He doesn't <laughs> really feel like a Ray Jackson to me. What does he look like? I, I don't know. He, it, it seems, where do you think Ray Jackson was from? I had all these questions later. We can do it now. What state was he he's from? He's definitely from somewhere where there's like a mountain nearby. Ooh, like, uh, yeah. Like, like could Wyoming? He be, yeah, yeah. What if he was named Sully? Sully. Like Sully, Sully Jackson. Sullivan? No, I don't like it. No? That doesn't sound strong enough. What Ray. would you go with? I like Ray, like Jackson. Ray Jackson. I like Ray Jackson. Okay. What was he training? What, what, was, his, what was his martial art? Well, I have that later. He does not big. do a he he's does not big. do a single MMA move in the movie, unfortunately. No. Ray's brute strength. Yeah. yeah. You gotta take him down. Old school. We have uh JVD knocks the guy out in what, twelve seconds? Twelve seconds. And leading to Ray going, first round of Kumite broke the fucking world record. Yeah. He's a, good, he's a good friend. Yeah, he's, he's a, a good really friend. Really good friend. Really good loyal. And then uh and then the song, Fight Blood Sport, Fight to Survive. Had that in the background. <laughs> what are they, were, would you put it above or behind You're the Best by Joe Esposito? I mean, you're the best is yeah, you're the you're best. best is better, right? Yeah, yeah. But Kumite's don't sleep on it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, next one, the later round of fights. So we're not in the semifinals yet, but they have another montage because they're like, you know what? You know, people love montages. They know what they, they know how to make an action movie. These yeah. people. Some highlights from this one. Chong Lee just breaks Swan Paredes. Swan Paredes just gets crushed, annihilated. Mm -hmm. They might didn't die, but probably uh, isn't doing this again. Frank Ducks, <laughs> Frank Dukes. He's ignoring that invite. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Tough, tough look for Jao Gomez, the guy who's who's like very slowly goes. Oh yeah, yeah. doesn't say anything, and then does the th the slow motion throat slit, and and Van Dam's like, all right, cool, and then beats him in like ten seconds. It's five seconds that it takes after as soon as this fight kicks him, the guy falls down, he kicks him off the mat. <laughs> yeah, which should have been a new world record, but nobody talks about that world. The, record. the timekeeping there. I don't see anybody with a stopwatch. Like, how are we keeping time? There's somebody, There's somebody who's like, that felt short. I don't know. I think that's a world record. There's no <laughs> clock. <laughs> there's no way to actually Yeah, there's no know. clock. You're there's right. There's no nothing. And they do it at, like, not 12 seconds, 12.2. Yeah, they were just like, hey, I don't know. That felt really short, guys. <laughs> and how did they get it so fast up on the scoreboard? They were <laughs> Those guys were working Neither. hard Fenway back there. Park doesn't <laughs> right. get the runs up that fast. So the uh, that one has those two. And then the battle of smiling fat bear hug guy against crawling around guy who's a complicated character. This we're going to get to later. Yeah. Um, that's a tough one. There's some gloomer hope for the crawling around guy initially mm -hmm. and then makes the mistake of the jump. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to close smiling the distance. Smiling fat uh, bear hug guy gets him and then that's it. And then um, JVD avenges with, in my opinion, the probably the second best fight in this whole movie. JVD against smiling fat bear hug guy. It's a great one. Where he does the stomach punch and you think it's over. Right. Yeah. Great slow-mo. 
boom. And yeah. it does like the shake after. Sure. Like this is why we this is why they did the thing with the brick so you can show us what's happening. Yeah, yeah. He just destroyed his his like intestines. Right. It went it, through, it went through, didn't damage any of the material up here, but, but then inside. went inside and it like broke his bottom vertebrae. Just but he walks backwards and then he's fine. And shakes then shakes it off and yeah. then Van Damme nails him. But uh there's no way they faked that. They they didn't have CGI back then. No, he no. hit him. No, he hit. He, they were like, "Hey, so <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where <laughs> where uh, John Claude's gonna uh, he's gonna really do it here. Yeah. You, you cool with that? Are we good? How many takes do you think that was? Oh, that was one. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think? I don't. I, yeah, we didn't get it. Can we? Can we do it again? The yeah. lighting wasn't great. Can uh, you just <laughs> little out of focus when you dropped down and 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 came over him? Can we get it again? You okay? You need to breathe for a second. Hey, when your liver is going into your vertebrae, can you just step back there? Yeah. That guy's name is Pumala. Pumala. P U M O L A. Pumala the giant. Next rewatchable scene. Chong Lee. <laughs> Chong Lee versus Ray Jackson. Uh -huh. This is very tough. You know how it's going to end. It's like Goose dying in Top Gun. I know how it's going to play out. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to celebrate. And also, they, and, celebrating just a terrible idea. Like, why are you doing that? China, you landed one good blow against Chong Li. You're right. running he was around. Shook. Yeah. He, all you had to do is push him off. He was right there on the yeah. edge. He's down. Just fucking give him a shove. I like, I like that he shouts that he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. He's not dead. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's just kneeling down a little bit, Ray. Um, I'm just, before we even get to the rest of the categories, this is my favorite scene because especially Van Damme the oh, acting. That's the Oscar. That's the Oscar. That's the reel. Oscar. Clip. <laughs> that's the Oscar reel. He's being held back. He just, we just watched him punch the fifth brick in a five br brick yeah. pile. Now he's being held back by like the five, seven hundred ten pound guy. Somehow can't get out. No, 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 no. <laughs> it does that whole thing. Um, it's spectacular. And then also it seems like Ray Jackson is just murdered Apollo Creed style. Yeah. It's pretty bad. See, Kind of surprised he came out of that. Tough guy. Well, I think that's why they did the thing earlier with the when he has a brick when he breaks with his head. Yeah. I'm mean, like, okay, there's something he's, he's got, got some a very, very the hard heads. skull. And then uh I got three more. A lot this, of brick foreshadowing. The semifinals. What are the gambling lines at this point? <laughs> out of curiosity. Who do you have favored? You don't know anything. You're just you've been going to Kumite this whole time. By the semifinals? We have Frank Ducks first Paco. Frank mm -hmm. Dukes first Paco. And we have Chong Lee versus Chan Lee Lo, Lo, Mung. Yeah. Who it's, ends up being Chong Lee still. Chong Lee kills a guy. That's Chong Lee Mung, the yeah. guy who dies. Both Dukes and Chong Lee are massive, massive favorites. Yeah. I think Chong Lee's like a minus 600 favorite. Yeah. He's, he, he's favorite. way up there. Everybody that fights Chong is like either dead or in the hospital. Yeah. And both of them have like the top three fastest knockouts in the history of Kumite. Mm. And it's in it's this a, tournament. It's a powerhouse. Yeah. It's a powerhouse. This house. might be my favorite section, actually. So Frank Dukes against Paco is just a great fight. Good battle. Wonderful fight. I like Paco. Paco's my fucking guy. Paco's good. That's my guy. Good he was one. the guy I pretended to be. You I, I had my hands up here. <laughs> right. With like my sisters. Like, what oh, is, you want to let's go? It's like a Muay Thai kind of move. Yeah. yeah. But he's also got like this kind of like Vince Carter, like starting the motorcycle <laughs> kind of feel to it. He's revving his leg up. And then when he gets, when, when Frank shakes him a little bit, he just, he, Adds like a little bit of a like a like a dancing vibe to mm -hmm. the shoulders. Yeah, it's, he's just like a very stylish fighter, fun yep. to watch. So I'm grouping that together with Chung Lee kills a guy because mm -hmm. that's not very long. Um, couple things, incredible performance by the ref who never has a word, but it's, his, his is, disgust and horror is just accurately <laughs> portrayed. Why is he out there? There are, we need to be no rules. No, none. Well, I think if you if you uh, quit. I think you need sure. the ref to hear the quitting part. Yeah. I think would be the only reason. And maybe it seemed like as part of the rules, if you fell off the stage thingy, you lost. Yeah. Yeah. Which we never, even when he goes blind at the end, we never had to worry about anyone falling off the stage. Um, the crowd chaining Chong Lee and then the council turning and the crowd quickly going, oh, this is bad. And mm -hmm. then everybody just turning their backs on Chong Lee, basically, including Van Damme, who's learning the customs, like, on the fly, I guess. Yeah. And Chong Lee does things, like, he's just, he's mad. Yeah, Chong Lee. Disgusting. You guys suck. They don't appreciate. You can't kill a guy here in Kumite anymore. Come yeah. on. They don't appreciate his, like, he's, a, he's an excellent fighter. He's a wonderful showman. He was, 
he was really going for it. And what I really like about Chong Lee, who's my favorite character in the movie, is he was ratcheting it up every fight. Every yeah, fight every, got a little yeah, bit worse. Every fight. Every single fight. He's with, like, oh, I'm with just Dukes gonna, as the final target. I'm going <laughs> to knock you out. I'm going to break your leg. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to stomp on your head to try to kill you. Now I'm going to kill you for, like, it was getting worse. He's like a Darth him. Vader figure, too. Like, he's he's on the screen less than you think, and he hardly says anything. Seven minutes. But his his... The feet, he's like cast this huge shadow yes. over the entire movie. You just feel him coming. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I, I still watch wrestling because of my son. The way they use Brock Lesnar in the WWE mm -hmm. is how it's like barred from Chong Lee. Right. Where he's not in there that much. He doesn't do that many matches. But when he's in there, you're just aware of him the whole time. Doesn't say much. Even Like Jason said, even when he's not there, you, 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 feel, you it. feel his presence. You know that that showdown is coming and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, And then that ends with, you are next. Which might have been dubbed. Unclear if the I think, words were actually matching his lips on that. This is a great question. Yeah. I think he said it. They might have dubbed every line he had in this. It's not out of question. Then uh, Frank versus Chong Lee. So many twists and turns. What was in the blinding powder? This is um, a great step question. Step on the probably unanswerable questions early. What, what was in there? Acid? I salt. It's a salt peel. Why did why did he go completely blind? He didn't. When they show it from his I, eyes, it's just like blurry. I, sure, but then <laughs> then again, like when he has Chong down, like he's got a he's like moving his head around, well, you he's know, listening. like he's to listening. I know, but like, come on, he seems completely blind. Well, he might have been hamming it up at yeah, that I point. Right. Yeah, he was going you know, for it. You think it's so? It's salt. I think so. I feel like I read that somewhere that it was just a salt pill. Salt with some. I think we should try it. Incredible, incredible, incredible slow motion freak out. Yes. By so, Van Dam. When you see that part, I, I feel like that was a, that's the moment when you have to say, like, he might be, he might be able to figure this acting thing out. Because that was like a very pure, very emotional moment. He was really hurt. I f even now, all these years later, every time I watch that scene, I, I feel bad for him in that moment. He had worked so hard, he had trained for so long, and he felt like this moment is getting stolen from me. Because this guy cheated. Like Tim Duncan, like game it's, six, it's yeah. not, 2013. It's not enough that you're allowed to kill me if you want to, but now you're going to fucking cheat yeah, me. Cheat. And, 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 and he was really hurt, and that was a good moment for and him. You Where, were hurt. Again, where's I the was. council? Where's any kind of official? Somebody where's should any? have seen that. Come, Come on. on. What are we doing out here? It doesn't seem like there were a lot of rules in the, in the Kumite. It's very tough down there. Really good acting by him. And also, good slow-mo during an era where we hadn't Thank really you. figured out slow-mo. Yeah. Effectively at all, and the slow mo is good. I was gonna say, is that is that their most expensive day? Like the day that they had yeah. to use the slow mo uh, <laughs> film and the slow mo camera. <laughs> They're yeah. like, they've got this one special Hong Kong camera for one day, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of people got paid off, <laughs> and that's how it played out. And then incredible comeback. I would say one of the better sports movie comebacks of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the chips are down, flying back. Um, and then the last scene. Van Damme goes to see Ray Jackson in the hospital. Who's better? He's got this giant it's comical bandage back, with basically. blood on him. Yeah. Leading to, um, he returns his Harley Davidson bandana. Ray holds his hand. Anytime, any place, anywhere. You need me, I'm there. Good friend. And cuts to the girlfriend. Who's just like Girl, looking, looking is, like ready to cry. Girlfriend's a little strong, yeah, I think. Lady friend. Yeah, yeah. Who looks near tears. Mm-hmm. Cutting to Van Damme, Van Damme, Van Damme, <laughs> fighting off tears. They're still holding hands. And he goes, I love you, my friend. And it's like a moment. It is a moment. This is one of the worst acted movies probably of the 80s. And that's like a great scene. It gets me emotional. That scene is more emotional than anything Steven Seagal ever did. Oh, he's way, he's way above him. Yeah. Yeah, that's when Seagal he's like, I'm the, taking this corner. Bottom. Yeah. Um. I wondered this when I did the action movie thing. When they do that scene and all of a sudden they turn into De Niro, De Niro and Pacino and Heat inexplicably, <laughs> what is, okay. what's it like on the set? Okay. Just chills. It, cut. Just, oh my God, guys. That was like, it. Cut. Yeah. Wow. We, oh my God. That was great. <laughs> Amazing, guys. I wonder if, so they never shoot movies like in order. Yeah. They probably did that scene early on. And I wonder if for the rest of the movie, everyone was like, what the fuck? Is, yeah, do what you did before. Come on, Van Damme. That is my favorite scene in the movie, but I think the most rewatchable is uh, 
is Chong Lee killing a guy. Mm, That's where what, I'm what, are you, go. what are you going? That's just so horrifying. Most rewatchable, I'm going to go with just any of the fight montages. I think the final fight is just incredible. Five way tie for you? Yeah. It's, they're all great. This movie is really good at knowing what people want to see mm -hmm. and getting you to that point. Like, backstory, let's do it quick and get into the fighting. You know, the fighting, let's show you all the different styles of these, of these guys. And then how about a little Jean-Claude Van Damme in a Speedo? You want that too? Great, we'll give that to you. <laughs> but I think it's, I, for me, it's the final fight. It's iconic. Shay? You know what? I'm going different than both of y'all. I like the introduction. This is not even on your list. The introduction of Chong Lee for his first fight. Oh. We get the, his name comes up on the, on the cards. We get that noise, yeah. the bad guy noise. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, here we go. He gets up out of his seat. And then uh, Lin, Victor Lin, like leans over and he like, they, they, they basically download Jean-Claude Van Damme, all of Chong Lee's stats about how he killed a guy on the last one. He's never been defeated. He like holds all kinds of, of records. They're just setting everything up perfectly for how terrifying this guy is going to be. And they they stick the landing on every single part of that scene. I love I love a good character introduction more than anything else mm. in, in this kind of movie. It's usually when you got he killed the guy, that's I'm usually good at that point. Yeah. yeah. Or he killed the guy. I mean, yeah. This guy's a badass. But then he had all these world records too. He just it was a really kept, a great record. He resume. just kept going. Yeah. Yeah. They left out in the introduction. He's done more steroids than everybody else in Hong Kong combined. <laughs> Possibly. What's age the best? We mentioned Donald Gibb as Ogre. This is really a trilogy for him. He starts out, he's Ogre in Revenge of the Nerds. He, mm -hmm. Everybody knows him that. Then he's in First and Ten, the HBO football series that O.J. Yeah. Simpson was on. And then Bloodsport. And then I have no idea what happened to him. But he's, he had a nice little five-year run there. He's really great in this. Super, just like perfect sidekicky. Where you're just like, that guy's got that guy's got my dude's back. I don't have yeah. to worry about this guy. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be no turn. He's he's Jean Claude's buddy through and through. Yeah. That's it. Never have to worry about that. I'm gonna go with Janice Kent and the importance of a free press. Like she's just out here. I've heard about this Kumite. <laughs> you know, I've heard about it. Just whispers on the street about I'm here this for Kumite. the Atlantic. I'm going out there. I'm gonna go undercover. I'm going to like find out what's going on in this country. She's a really good reporter because this has been happening for hundreds of years yes. by this point. And she's cracked it. It's never been written about. And she shows up there. I like, and gets in the room. And she gets talks, in the gets in the room. She talks to like five different fighters. And yeah. they're all, you know, she found the guys who got invited right. to the underground thing. It's Everyone's willing to talk to her. I like when she's doesn't take notes sitting front row, but Pulls out her recorder and just starts going and talking to the recorder. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure everyone's going to notice that in the Kumite. Uh, another, more what's age the best, the fight scenes we talked about. Uh, a couple of Chong Lee things that I just think have aged beautifully and disgustingly. The blowing out the boogers out of the nose mm -hmm. is such an yeah. aggro villain move yeah. that he does it, I don't know, seven times, but... Mm -hmm. I think you should have done it before this podcast. I think it's exactly. <laughs> you should have walked in. <laughs> Set the tone. The late 80s steroids body that just nobody has anymore because yeah, the steroids are better. Nobody has like just that chest. Yeah, that whole like chest a, torso thing. It's like a thing. fucking yeah. love seat. Yeah. It's crazy. From shoulder to shoulder. It's unbelievable. It's, it's insane. The break my record, now I break you. Like I break your friend. Classic. Yeah. That would have been a good senior yearbook quote for somebody. <laughs> His celebrations, very creepy, kind of like, dorky. Except I disagree. I, I think that was it. that was like the scariest thing he could have possibly because he done. can't he can't lift his arms all the way over yeah. his head because he's got so much steroids in him. So he's just kind of like this, jumping up and down. I had a lot of trouble. I'm glad you brought that up because I I'm really thrown by his part of what makes him so sinister is like I can't read his emotions like he's smiling but he also seems like super mad yes and then it's like yes he's like brutally savagely strong but also like has this weird daintiness when he's celebrating you know <laughs> like this like it's he's just a very strange character and really scary would you would you have wanted a scene where he just goes home and he's got a wife and two kids <laughs> just like a just, normal guy yeah, just like, a how very normal guy. Today, honey got his glasses <laughs> on he's like, i got wait, a little carried away again i killed the guy the, paper. The, <laughs> <laughs> the part where they show him with clothes on in the in the reflection is always weird to me i just only want to see him 
yeah. no shirt on. Yeah. They, that is a great villain that you can't imagine having a normal life other than just brutalizing other human beings. Yeah. <laughs> great job by them. The peck flexes, we forgot to mention. Well, yeah, unnecessary. Why? I don't can in- showmanship again. I guess yeah. Brock Lesnar, by the way, it's another thing Brock Lesnar stole from Chang Lee. Chang Lee and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he's in a tournament where you can kill the other people. You have to do everything you can to psych these guys out. I guess yeah. These are right. world class right. fighters. You're right. More would sage the best. Uh, Van Dam's terrible acting has aged the best for me because he's so bad, and I don't understand why they didn't do more takes of certain scenes. Why they just? I think the director just cared about the the fighting stuff. And the dialogue was an unnecessary hindrance to what they really wanted this movie to be. It was just a collection of montages of fight scenes. I can't say I disagree. No, but they played it smart. They played it they exactly. Played but it Van Damme definitely seven years later is like pretty decent as an actor. He yeah, was yeah. not decent in this. Do you want to talk about the arena? Is this like the perfect arena for you? Yes. For it's a fight a, arena? There's, it's a sandy floor. That's right. I'll go this way. This is how you know it's perfect. What would you change? You can't change anything. Not I yet. honestly wouldn't, you, unless you want to put alligators around the pit where if you fell, you- See, that's already too yeah, far. Yeah, that's stupid. You want to fall out and land in the sand and- like, And that's, like a, lot of up, that's a lot of upkeep yeah. also. I mean, you got to feed them and you got to clean the alligator pit, all that stuff. You don't what want would you, would you change there. anything, Jason? It's, it's kind of perfect. I, I love it. Also, I love, you know, I'm a big, uh, the, the walled city- in Hong Kong, which they've since knocked down, really fascinates me. Like as, mm-hmm. a, as just like a structure well, that existed, yeah, Kowloon, and to have like this secretive fighting arena, like within that, is just really cool and fascinating. Yeah. It's a great, it's a perfect size. Yeah, the 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 right number of seats. The crowd is close enough that you can sort of feel them. What's the capacity there? Four hundred, maybe. It would be interesting it's, if somebody. It's, it's like a middle school gym, like smaller yeah. than a middle school gym. It would be interesting if UFC or Bellator did a whole pay-per-view that was just called Kumite Mm -hmm. and just had 400 people there, but a lot of cameras. Yeah. And just was like, hey, we're just trying this. I would, I would, I would pay. You would. Dirt floor, $249. Yeah. (laughs) Got to. The, uh, the ref we mentioned, I want to shout out Stan Bush who wrote Bloodsport Fight to Survive, the Mm -hmm. song. Stan Bush. He's the Joe Esposito of the late 80s. And then, uh, Young Frank, before he becomes Van Damme, mm. but he's like 13-year-old awkward trying to have a bad French accent, mm-hmm. Van Damme. He's wearing like a number 55 Giants jersey. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on there. Because you figure- a Giants hat. San Francisco Giants hat. New York Giants jersey. There's also, and you're thinking Giants. early 70s, mid 70s, and he's rooting for two teams in two different cities, <laughs> both named Giants. And I just one don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I enjoy that. There's also a kid in one of those flashbacks in the bullying flashback who's yeah. wearing a Bartles and James t shirt. Mm. Which did they like, did they have Bartles and James whenever a tough that was merch supposed scene to be? in Kowloon? I wonder if they knew they were going in there for the sword or they just saw it once they got it. Like, what? I think they were just, yeah, they were They're just, just like, poking around. Poking that around seems complicated. And, yeah. Okay. Jason, how would you compare the first underground walk to Kumite to the Goodfellas, Scorsese, one shot, nightclub shot? I think it's very close. 1A, 1B. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Scorsese edging it out because it is, you know, the camera work, it goes on for continuous. such a long time, continuous. Um, but can you, you know, the Kumite vibe, bringing you into this world that uh, you would never have access to, it was really, it's really something else. Kumite also. Great name. Great name. Incredible name. Kumite. Name. Just the best. All right. Uh, what's age the worst? Um, the acting. We covered that. Wait, can I add one for what's age the best? Let's do it. I really like the, the tournament movie structure. Mm. Any movie where there's a tournament in place, I'm in. Because you don't have to explain board. very much. A board. Some I sort love of it. board. Let me see you move somebody's name yep. further. Got to have that. I really like it. Any any fighting tournament, absolutely. It just works. So when we have a ringer MMA tournament, we'll have a board. I can't wait. We should. We should have a to board. the death or what? Who's favored in that? To the to the maiming. Rosillo. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Rosillo's part Curtis. of the ringer now. Brian Curtis. <laughs> Brian <laughs> Brian Curtis is this dusting everybody. This is my everybody. favorite Shea, Shea bit. I'm, I'm, terrifi- I'm terrified is, of the guy. Sigla is secretly the strongest look, guy at the ringer. Look at his hands the next time you see him. <laughs> They're like. Like David? the size of football helmets. He's from Texas. He's yeah. from Texas. He's been in some brawls. Yeah. He's got the face that lets you know, like, I'm not going to take any shit. <laughs> and if you try it, I'm going to put you in the dirt. <laughs> Listen, these are some movies that, uh, with tournaments in them. Bloodsport. Undisputed. Yeah. Mm. Karate Kid. Yep. Great. Warrior. 
best of the best. Like for our last. That's not technically a tournament. It's like, you know, it's like a cumulative tournament. Um, Enter the Dragon. Oh, the classic. Fucking Never Back Down. Mortal Kombat. The Quest, which was basically Bloodsport 2. These are, these are all fantastic. Well, there was that stretch late 80s into the early 90s where the video games had started and the movies started to kind of reflect the video games. Yeah. Where do you stand on Best of the Best of him that finishing the guy off with 10 seconds left? When I was little, I wanted him to to kill him. Now you're a piece of that? Now I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I understand now. This was a this is a bigger deal. Because he because Dehan shows up in Best of the Best 2 when he, when Tommy needs backup. I like to throw that out there. Shout What's age the best for me is Chong Lee. I don't know if you guys disagree. All right, that that's the that's the pick. I love 31 everything. years later, just still in awe of Chong Lee and what He's they created. Such a wonderful movie character. Even the, his celebration thing, like all of his parts are interesting. Yeah. That's just so cool. We just talked about oh, oh, that's a good one. In in um in Warrior. Yeah. When Tom Hardy's character, whenever he wins a fight, his celebration is he just immediately leaves the ring, like yeah. as fast and angry as he can. That's so that's what, like those are the three best, I think. Post fight celebrations, Chong Lee jumping around with that high pitch, like, ah, ah, weird yeah. noise. Tommy leaving immediately, and Daniel LaRusso, like, being confused every time that he won. Those are my three favorites. Stunned. <laughs> yeah, he's just his, like, I, I, support, I, did it, I did it. Look at two his uh, support group yeah. of his mom and his <laughs> semi girlfriend. Yeah, he's like, just double checking all the Come time. Come on, Daniel, be strong. <laughs> be strong. <laughs> you have no friends. What's age the worst? The acting we mentioned. Um, we got to talk about the crawling guy. The monkey fighter, I think. The monkey guy. It's, very yeah. I, monkey it's guy, problematic at this point. It's not but, great. Yeah. I got to say, I loved him for years and years before we started to think twice about some of this stuff. But the style itself, can we just talk about the style? Mm -hmm. Is that really going to work long term? I don't. Just hopping <laughs> around term. low to the ground? It, yeah, like, I got him to the semis. It did get him to the semis. We never really saw a lot of footage of him, though, leading up to that. I mean, we saw enough. You saw him crack that one guy's head open. I mean, it seemed he, like he he was down low. He would try to trip the person, then he would jump on them. Was his move, but it seemed like the better move would be to just stay it, away. I'll, I'll say the thing about his style. And listen, he got the invite to the Kumite, mm -hmm. so you got yeah. have to give him his respect. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, it's like small ball when it first came in. It's a it's a change of pace, and you're surprised by it. But as soon as he starts getting to the later rounds, people start scouting him. You know what? You know what you're gonna say. So you're saying like Mike D'Antoni. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know I was gonna say James Harden. <laughs> so it's the James Harden yeah, one on you five style. You understand what what is happening at that point? People have scouted him. They've they got seven some game series. It can't forget work. about you, it. You yeah. mentioned the thing earlier about the in the beginning of the movie when they're standing around and they look like islanders. Yeah, like you can tell watching this movie today. Like this was written by a white guy or a couple of white guys, and they're like, "What do do you know anything about this?" And they're like, "I don't know. Make make him a monkey, <laughs> yeah. I guess." Like that? No, that's like that doesn't work. <laughs> that does not it's great. Really, it's really bad, guys. Well, how do you feel about the plot with the reporter in general? Because I have it in what's age the worst. Uh, I think there's certain aspects of it that have aged the worst, like her going undercover, like basically as a call girl to get yeah, into the to, to get to into the use kumite. sex as a, as a weapon. Yeah. Very, very. That that's is tough one. sleeping with a subject is like a slightly bit, problematic. It's not great. <laughs> it's no. very, very bad. Yeah. Um, other than that, that you know, it's just very interesting, like that trope of like, how do we get the female reporter? It really was a trope of the seventies and eighties. Like, how did they, the A Team, for instance, is well, in the another one in the making of this movie? Or I read about the making of it, and they really wanted this to be the to action movie that everybody liked in the eighties, but with a little kind of romance thrown in. Right. They're mm -hmm. trying to crack that code. So at some point, the two white guys, the four white guys, <laughs> after they saw a monkey guy, yeah. they were like, hey, what if it's a female reporter undercover, but she has a little thing for Jean-Claude. Mm -hmm. And they're like, good, write that down. <laughs> That's, That's a good idea. Um, there's a really tough two minutes here post Ray Jackson injury with Jean-Claude moping around uh, Hong Kong. You just say like riding the, the bus song, and stuff. To a song that goes, on my own, I can be strong. And it's like classic bad, like worse than Frank Stallone. Mm -hmm. Frank Stallone like wouldn't have done this. But it does lead to him on the on the the freaking yeah, whatever that it. is. Yeah. It's worth it. Doing the split yeah. on like the 15th floor of some balcony. Reconnecting to like the thing that got him here. To, and there's no way that's CGI. Yeah. There's, there's no ropes. There's no safety harness. No, he's up there. He's like... I will get now on the on the thing, and I will do it. I will do it. I mean, split. there's a reason you film this movie the way you do in Hong Kong, 
because it's just like, hey, do we just get up there and to do the split? And if you fall, please don't, because then we have to like, shoot the movie <laughs> yeah. with a double. <laughs> they checked his insurance first. <laughs> yeah, like- it is funny though, for such a like terribly acted and probably directed movie, there are some like really good scenes. Like that, There's a lot of them. That ending scene of him yeah. on that thing is pretty great. Like Scorsese would have been like, yeah, it's pretty good. Nice shot. I like that you used Hong Kong in the back. I- and then the next scene is just the reporter running around. The uh, There's that lame chase scene we mentioned earlier. Such a fall from grace athletically for Forrest Whitaker, who was the star linebacker in Fast Times Ridge Run High <laughs> and was headed to the NFL as the middle linebacker who could beat offenses by I, himself and now can't run through Hong Kong. I just want to read this. I just want to read the IMDb of Forrest Whitaker okay. from oh, wow. 86 to, let's Is say, Vision Quest on 88. There? Don't leave out Vision Quest. I, okay, I won't do it. Vision Quest 85. Then he does a bunch of TV, Fall Guy, 85 different mm. strokes. North and South. Different strokes. Miniseries, yes. Amazing stories. Uh, here we go. 86. Color of Money. Scorsese. Great. Yeah, he's great. good in that. Platoon. Great. Big Herald. Another great another great character. Goes back to D- TV to his hands of a stranger. I don't know back to is. movies. Stakeout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very likable. Good Morning Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Mm, he's Blood good in that. Sport. Bird. Which I believe he's nominated for. Bird was when it's like, wow, that the guy from Fast Times is a real actor. It just like an incredible run to throw Bloodsport in there. Wild. This is like several Oscar nominated movies in this run. And then yeah. Bloodsport. I love him in Color of Money. I like when he asks it. If, oh, if yeah. He's going to gain some weight. Yeah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> he fucking got Well, you. he's also, then he had a good career, but then he would just pop up in Species for no reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, be like, he's wow, just, you're in Species. Why are you in listen, this? He for, seems like a fun guy. Forrest Whitaker, the thing I respect about him, in addition to the fact that he's obviously like a great actor, like a really good actor, my man's just about securing that bag. Species? Sure. What, what's that? Sex Alien? Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah, I was just I'll in, play the second. I, I was just in a hard-hitting Vietnam movie uh, that was nominated for multiple Oscars. Let's do the Sex Alien. Also, see when I watch him, it's a I, great movie. I feel less like it's about him just trying to get some money, and more like it's about him just wanting to do a thing that sounds cool. Mm. I think it's man. I, why I can't lo- it be I, both? I love. Let's it. marry the things together. I love well, it. we should mention he eventually to, he won an Oscar. He, won he played Idi Amin. He's a, he's a brilliant actor. I love him in Phone Booth. He's in he's Phone Booth in with phone Colin Farrell. Like, it's basically guy. just him and Colin Farrell that yeah, whole movie. They'll just carry it. So, first time you saw this, if you if somebody had told you there's an Oscar winner in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have picked Jean Claude. He was out. I might not. Donald have, Gibb might be out. I might not have picked Forrest Whitaker either. He is. I'm not, not sure I would have picked Forrest is, Whitaker. I would have picked the actress. He put two stamps on it, but he's definitely mailing it in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, another what's age the worst? Ray Jackson's MMA skills, considering he doesn't do MMA <laughs> at all know. in the movie. I don't really know what his style was. I don't think he's an MMA fighter. Yeah. He's just a. He's like a he's like a Chuck Liddell. When Chuck Liddell right. showed up in the MMA, Tough man guy. Yeah. he's like, I'm just gonna knock you out, yeah. and, or or you're gonna knock me out. Pick one. And then Young Frank, the accent, the acting, it's just, it's like they just looked at some headshots and they said, ah, oh, he kind of looks like Jean Claude. Let's do this. We've got twelve hundred dollars left. Who can we get? <laughs> oh, this guy. This kid. It's like, hey, I know it's late, but can you try a French accent or a Belgian accent or just anything that sounds foreign? His dad, when they meet up with his parents, with Frank's friend, had a totally different accent. Yeah. Like not yeah. even close. Yeah. It's rough. What stage is the worst? The monkey guy. It's got to be, it, yeah, it's got to be the monkey guy. And the reporter. And then and the Janice. reporter. And then we didn't even mention Ray Jackson, like, sexually harassing the <laughs> yeah. woman on the, on oh, the train. Oh, I was very, forgot very about tough. that. Yeah, yeah. That was very tough. And he, like, traps her in the yeah. seat with his gigantic Ray Jackson leg. And Jean-Claude's like, look at this guy. Yeah. They're kind of enjoying it. Oh, this guy's a character. Casting what ifs, I don't have any. There's not like a ton of information about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> there might have been some what ifs. I Honestly, don't. Forrest Whitaker f- feels like a casting what if. Like <laughs> the fact that he's in it. Who else was up for this? I so, wonder, uh, <laughs> who gave him the script? Yeah. Did he find if it If he's himself? ever on a podcast, that'll definitely be my first question. All right, so Bloodsport. What this happened like, there? This feels like something like his sister's like a uh, fiance or something was like, Hey, we do like, I have my friend has this movie he's doing in Hong yeah. Kong. Like, can you help us help out? us out? The, uh, best that guy, AKA the Joey pants award. Mm. I'm giving this to Norman Burton. Any Ooh. idea who he is? Helmer. He was, yeah. Forrest Whitaker's partner. 
He's one of those guys. I didn't had no idea what his name was until I Googled it. I just want to point out a little stretch he had. He was on a lot of TV shows. Kojak, Beretta, Harry O, Rockford Files, Wonder Woman, Quincy, Chips, Simon and Simon, and Knight Rider. Just in like an eight-year run. Like there was a certain actor that just popped up on all of those shows, mm -hmm. all of those procedural shows. So he made that Can one. Can I just say one thing about Helmer and Rollins? So you're here to um apprehend Frank Dukes, this expert fighter, Green Beret, who's gone on the run to fight in a to the death uh, martial arts tournament. And you send like two dudes with stun guns and no one else. Right. And you're like, yeah, let's take, we're just going to cattle prod him. And then I guess drag him to the plane. Like send more people. <laughs> send why, <them. laughs> like, why are you doing it this way? How many people <laughs> do they have to send Shay? Like to, eight to capture Van To Dam? actually capture him. I say minimum eight. You need you need ten or twelve, I think. Ten or twelve. You need okay. ten or twelve. Well, maybe maybe I mean, a they plane try, of people. You need they try three, it in you need the hotel three, lobby. Three per limb. Is they the, is try the rule it in the Van hotel Dam. lobby. Mm -hmm. Just the two of them. Yeah. And then Ray like knocks them out, and, yeah. and then the chase ensues, and they're like, "All right, now I guess we got to call in the Hong Kong police." But like, you got to start there. Mm -hmm. Start with like fifteen people, and yeah. then. After repeatedly, I had this later for nitpicks, but we can do it now. After repeatedly failing at their one job the whole time, <laughs> right. they're like, hey, you going to the final I round of the game? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in row two. Oh, and cool. Like, right. Let's go <laughs> watch the fight because we can't get this guy. The Saul Rubinek, they knew award for uh, most egregious overacting. I, I would actually say there's more underacting than overacting, but I do think the no, 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 no is, is that has to be the choice. Who wins the Dion Waiters Award for biggest heat check? Victor I, Lin. You think so? Yeah, wow. yeah, for sure. It's got to be him. He's the only other guy I remember from the movie. That's it. Chong Lee's not eligible. Yeah, no. Chong Lee doesn't count. Ogre's he's, he's in too it too much. The only other one I was thinking was the, the, quiet, the they, pointing, they, point at you, point at me guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's in there for a minute, but it's a memorable <laughs> minute. But uh, He looks tough. He's got all the muscles. He's all shiny and shit. Is it possible the reporter is the Dan Waiters Award winner? No. In it too much? No, it's not that she's in it too much. It's that she's too good of an actress. Yeah, she's too good. You need to not be that good of an actor or actress to like do the thing. Well, if Chong Lee's really in this for seven minutes, maybe we could shoehorn him in. Do you think it's, do you think it's Van Damme's Speedo? In the post coitus scene, <laughs> that's a good call. Van Damme <laughs> flipping his, on his, over his giant butt cheeks. <laughs> his butt is is like very round. He Have you ever looked at your own butt in the mirror? Yeah, it's definitely mine not as round as that. Mine does not look like that. Do you think like they that. cleared the set that day? No. So <laughs> no. He, call, he called him in. Yeah, he called more yeah, people. Like, everybody, I want gather everybody, around. Everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who wins the Dan Waiters Award. Half ass internet research. So Frank Dukes. His resume allegedly was 329 Kumite matches Glad from 75 to 80, <laughs> undefeated. <laughs> and there was most consecutive KOs 36. This is at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. And there's just a million things on the internet about this. Yes. That he might have made up everything, I'm glad most you of said it, it all up. half of it, some of it. We don't, we'll it's, never know. It was like a whole thing in the Los Angeles Times. There was a big story on it a few months after the movie came out, and they just disproved everything. Even this, they, like he had a trophy that he said they gave to him. And it turned out that he had it made like down yeah. the block from his house. Yeah, I mean, he, he said he was in the CIA and then his dad was like in the Mossad. There's a lot of Frank Dukes been spinning some tall tales. Yeah. The co-writer Sheldon Ledich, who I think was one of the two aforementioned white guys mm -hmm. that Shay mentioned. He said, I had known Frank Dukes for a number of months before I came up with the idea of blood sport. Frank told me a lot of tall tales, most of which turned out to be bullshit. But his stories about participating in the so-called Kumite event sounded like a great idea for a movie. Mm -hmm. So he definitely inspired with stories, true, false, semi-false, whatever, inspired See, the that movie. See, that was the real Frank Duke's mistake. He should have not, he should have not been like, this happened to me. He should have been like, I right. have an idea for a movie. Right. And then just made he could have made 25 martial arts movies. Cause the stuff he was making up yeah. was incredible. I read one story where he was talking about it, and he said that. You know, they toned it down for the for the movie version. In the real life version, we didn't just fight on this platform. We fought in different locations. There was one time where we fought on the temple of a building and the tiles are cracking under our feet. Like, and the logistics of that is just unbelievable. Yeah, he's like really good at making shit up. He should have gone that way instead. 
He's I, like, there's this one time I punched these five bricks and only the bottom one broke. Yeah, that's like, that's like a crazy thing to yeah. think of. That's what, you could really do that pre-internet, just be out there just yeah. saying it wild is true. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wild stuff. That might be a what's age the best for Frank Dukes, but what's age the worst <laughs> of the movie is. You, you can't make up shit like that anymore yeah, you unless you're running for president. Say the, uh, you want. The, uh, he also said, Sheldon Ledditch, there was one guy who he introduced me to named Richard Bender who claimed to have actually been at the Kumite event and swore everything Frank told me was true. A few years <laughs> later, this guy had a falling out with Frank and confessed to me that everything was a lie. Frank had coached him in what to say. I got to say. Frank Dukes. Yeah. I got to say, just if you, you can Google Frank Dukes and look at him, and obviously, you know, uh, you can't judge a book by its cover. Doesn't look like a ninja. No. But it doesn't look like a 15th degree ninjutsu expert who, like, Killed people for the CIA. Took Chung Lee down. Yeah. What's What's crazy to me is like when you read about him, when you see him, he's so very clearly what Steven Seagal ended up yes. becoming. And yeah. did, like, oh, that I get it now. Yeah. I, I feel like he read that story. Seagal did and said, "I'll just do that. Seagal I'll just, I'll just make some up. make up some shit." He ended up being the fighting coordinator for the film and put Jean Claude through a three month training program. Um, so this was filmed inside. Kowloon Wild City, which then got destroyed, mm -hmm. which I don't know anything about, but I guess they just knocked down the whole city. I don't I didn't really understand it. Uh, I think they knocked it down to build an airport also. It was like, and now I'm just speaking from my cursory uh, research over the years about this subject, but it was like, uh, it was a constant fire hazard and I guess like associated with like crime and stuff mm. because people would just like flee in there and no one could find You couldn't them. find it. You couldn't find them. Somebody saw Bloodsport and was like, we need to Yeah, we need to shut thing. this down. <laughs> I just read Janice's story in the Atlantic about the Kumite. It's been going on for centuries in there. <laughs> Nominated for a Pulitzer. How many splits did uh, Jean-Claude do in this movie? He does uh, the drawn and quartered one. He does on the top of the temple. He does on the chairs. He does when he, when he fights Pumala. He does... I'm at four. You you just listed five. Five? Okay, I'm at five. I'm going five. Jason. Oh, wait, wait. And then when Pomala drags him, six. Oh, wow. That was, yeah, that does count, I guess. Yeah, he was Yeah, split. yeah, he was split. You can tell night. he was hurt for real on that one. Uh, I, you're asking, this is, the, this is the split expert who literally- The answer is seven. Oh! oh what did I miss? Which one did I miss? I think you might have missed the one when he jumps under a uh, smiling bear hug guy and then punches him. No, I got no, that. that, yeah, that oh, you know, that I know yeah. what it is. And this one shouldn't count, but it's when he jumps up over Chong Lee and he does him in the air. That's what it is. Okay. Mm. Well, that doesn't count. Listen, he did six. I found this on the internet, so it's got to be true. The fighter we mentioned was actually knocked unconscious by Jean Claude, who, and the teeth came out. That was all the elbow actually guy. thing. And they were like, that was cool. They kept it in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. Um, there's three fighters in this movie I wanted to mention. Go for it. So, Bolo was in Enter the Dragon. I don't know what his background is, but he had some stuff. Your dude, Paco, mm -hmm. was Paolo Tocha, Toka Tocha. He was a Muay Thai uh, champion. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then Michael Kissy, who played Swan Paredes, who got annihilated by Chong Lee, he went on to play Tong Po, the main villain in Kickboxer. That's always oh, my, he was the broken leg guy. I'm sorry. That's always my favorite bit of trivia, is that they went to Thailand to film this movie and they couldn't find someone from Thailand to play Tong Po. Yeah. So they fucking put the makeup on yeah. on our guy Michael. The um the arcade game that they played, do you know karate. Kung Fu Master or Karate? Oh, is it karate? Karate Champ. Nice. Yeah. 1984. I love the idea that um being good at karate champ, like your actual martial arts. It was a male skills, body. They, they translate. Mm -hmm. It yeah. translates to mm -hmm. that. Mortal Kombat apparently took huge inspiration from this film. I'm sure. Yeah. Which makes sense. Just never really that's the thought John, that's of it. That's the Johnny Cage character. Yeah. The game creator, John Tobias, said they wanted to make a gritty game based on the film. All right. Uh, Apex Mountain. I'm going to say yes for Donald Gibb. I don't think it got this. He's coming off Revenge of the Nerds and First and Ten. And then to be in this, it makes $65 million. You think this is bigger than Revenge of the Nerds? No, but he's like the 10th most important person in Revenge of the Nerds. This one, he's like focal. I don't know. It's it's in play. 
I think it's revenge on the This is definitely him. the first time this conversation's ever <laughs> happened on a podcast. What Donald Gibbs Apex was. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be revenge the, on the nurse. The uh, actress Leah Ayers, Leah I'm gonna Ayers. say yes. Mm-hmm. Cause she was just I looked at her IMDb and it's like a hundred TV shows that right. she was never on full time. She had a great run with Walker, Texas Ranger, apparently. Hmm. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Would you go Chong Lee, aka Bolo? Would you go this or Enter the Dragon? I go this. I go this. Too. Because he doesn't fight Bruce Lee in Enter yeah. the Dragon. And yeah. I think that disqualifies and him. And this is just like iconic. I mean, there, how many memes have been created because mm-hmm. of this character? How about you know, Kowloon? On. Gets knocked down after. I f- is this the apex of Kowloon Walled City? Ooh. I think that. What actually- other movies have been set in this place? It's kind of how it lives on now. I don't know enough about it. I think I think actually uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 might be Apex Mountain for Kowloon Walled City. Okay. That's all I got for uh, Frank. Frank Duke's probably his apex mountain. Yeah. <laughs> right before the internet, free internet was. <laughs> Anytime before the internet was his apex mountain. This is in Forrest Whitaker's apex mountain. No, yeah, that's I, I, is it right. This is the, this is Jean Claude Van Damme splits apex mountain. Picking nits. We mentioned everything. I just had. Um, I thought I just felt like everybody was too accommodating for Chong Lee's finishing move. They just let him do it. We're just like, he's holding people yeah, right, and yeah. he's doing the, he's getting the crowd up. And it's not like the guys are unconscious. They're just kind of like, yeah, they're uh, like, uh. somebody should have pulled him aside and be like, you got to stop killing people, John. You got to stop pe- putting people in the Once again, I disagree. It wasn't his gimmick. And then um, just some questions about how gambling worked in the Kumite. Just seemed like a lot of money and people shouting and um, throwing them. I, I didn't really. I, how do they keep track? I, I just had a lot of questions. That. I feel I, the, I feel the same way whenever I watch like old Wall Street movies, right? And they're in the pit. Just, yeah. 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 I'm like, no, what are you doing? No, 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 no. Like trading places. On? Sell, yeah. sell, two, buy, buy, buy. Two, they're just three, handing four. out papers. Yeah. That doesn't seem official. I, I like when the one guy gets knocked out on the and they just all throw their fucking betting tickets on top of him when he's laying on the ground. I will say I've been to a real cockfight in a cockfighting arena, uh, in the Philippines. Okay. Yeah. And. The way they do it there is there's like a person who look who covers one side of the arena called the Cristo, like Christ, because they hold their arms out like this yeah. to call in the bets. And you'll just be like, you'll like do some kind of hand signal, and they they just literally remember what you bet. And then at that the end of it, wildly inefficient. I'm just saying they somehow they remember, and then if you lose, you you ball up your money into like a little ball and just throw it into the ring and then they sweep it all up and they like put it in a basket and take it away. And if you don't pay, I guess you don't do that because yeah. then you just don't leave the arena. <laughs> but that's how they that's how they do it. And then if you win, they like ball up, they take the money and they make like a little triangle football out of it and they just throw it up to you. That sounds awesome. These guys have incredible memories. That's all I know. Any other picking nets? Uh, yes, I have one. Why did Jean-Claude Van Damme have to prove himself after he already had the invitation? I don't understand why he had to break the brick. You got the invitation. You're good to go. I guess that's like uh, (laughs) two-factor. It's like like two-factor authentication. Click the I'm not a robot and also what's the CAPTCHA. Right. You don't know if that's the real guy. Just make sure oh, it's the real guy. Just make point. sure it's the okay. real guy. I like to receive. You that think one. Jean-Claude, he would really just want to do the brick thing and they just kind of shoehorned it in. <laughs> well, I guess we could say your invitation is invalid. Okay, I have one other one then. Chong Li, who we know is the the reigning champ, he has nine fights in the tournament. So if this is a single elimination tournament, there have to be five hundred and twelve people <laughs> for him to have nine fights to get to the championship. Is that true? Yes. I did the math. Damn. Well, they do in the beginning, they cut to there's just a ton of fighters. In but there's the, not, in the 512. not 512. Is there just like a pile of bodies outside Kowloon Walled City? <laughs> <laughs> Best quote. I enjoyed Why Don't You Quit Round Eye as a way of heckling young, young Frank. I didn't have to take it there. Yes. Brick Not Hit Back became one of the iconic ones. Yes. It's a great hat tip to, to Bruce Lee. You Jackson, you look like a Jackson. Okay. See, even even Victor Lin agrees There's that that should really have been really not his a name. lot of not yeah. a lot of best quotes. There's not a lot of quotes in this movie. But when, then the, the no, obvious. No. No. The bolo. I break you. I break yeah. your friend. Those are really the best ones. Could this be remade as a ten episode Netflix show? My yes. My instinct was 
God, no. And then I started thinking about it. And if they just had a show called Kumite, I was trying to imagine your reaction to it. I think you would have to be like hosed off. Yeah, I would. Yeah, they you can would, do it. You wouldn't hear from me for, you know, however, however many episodes there were. Eight episodes, you all. make them 22 minutes. Like Fleabag, just really short and to the point. If they did, they did Cobra Kai and it was like, great. Give me, give me Kumite. Yeah. All right. Get on it. Netflix. Back to the, to the quote thing. Bill, there are three lines that get said to Chong Lee. Yeah. Do you know what they are? What are they? Three lines. This is, this is another great like character building thing. Tomorrow we leave for the Kumite. That's what his trainer tells him. That's the first thing anybody says. The next thing anything, anybody says to him uh, is Ray Jackson. I'm going to kill you, man. Yeah, and then the last one is is Van Dam yelling at him. Is all that's the, it. That's it. The only time anybody talks to him is like fight related stuff, and I love that. There's a deleted scene where he goes to visit the guy with the broken leg. He's like, "Sorry, man, yeah. just <laughs> just <laughs> got a little carried away. My bad." <laughs> Probably an answerable question. What happened to the mentor's son? Initially, the mentor goes, "Hey, man, this is all about getting my son into the Kumite someday," and and then but. And then he gets his ass kicked outside of school and he's never yeah. seen it again. So what happened? No, he dies. That's why Frank comes in. That's That should have been my answer for the Deanna But they Waiter never Suchet. show the death. No, they show them mourning the death. They, they've got a picture of him but up on the wall. But what happened? Yeah, he probably he was in the military or something. Who knows? No but, backstory at all? We have three minutes of him none. walking sadly around Kowloon to that sappy song, but we can't find out what happened to the mentor's son? No, Let me just also say, like, why is know. the mentor's, like... Why is the mentor's son so bad at fighting? You've got like access. So to bad. This, why you've got access to this incredible resource in your father, who's like how, wait, but how do we know that he was bad? Because he got beat up by three older kids. When no, he was, even the fight scenes with them were pretty bad. They, that kid should have been a badass. We should have been like, wow, that kid's like the kid. Like when we watched the uh, LeBron James Jr. highlights, uh, he's he, got to be a. Threshold. He put Frank on his on his knees. He did do that in the in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, he did do that. And Frank was holding a sword. He still ran up on him and fucking. Kick them. But again, that should have been my pick for the Dion Waiters. When the dad gives that speech about how his dad, I mean, his son is dead and like this tradition that we've been passing down from father to son, fathers, and he like chokes up in that moment. You're like, Oof. why can't we give him Dion Waiters? That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what it should All have right. been. That's good. Or the mom who's just smiling knowingly at everybody. <laughs> That's her best known lines. Yeah. Uh, another unanswerable question. Which I already asked, I'll ask again. What happens when you mention Bloodsport to Forrest Whitaker? Like you're at a dinner with him, you just happen Someone's to be at the next out. table. An hour into it, you're like, hey man, I fucking love Bloodsport. No What's way. his reaction? I think he's he's thrilled cool about it. Yeah. I, he's thrilled. You think he tells like a Kowloon story? He's got a yeah. million, oh, man, guy has got a million weeks. Kowloon stories. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's crazy, cool. man. They had to shut that place down. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker's an all time cool guy. Okay. 100%. Shay, out of all the sporting events you could have gone to in a sports movie, how high is Chong Lee, Frank Dukes, the finals? You could have been ringside with the with the Atlantic reporter. I mean, the storylines and, and the two FBI guys. The storylines write themselves. Yeah, you know. But how is that a top five? I would have wanted to be there for the finals moment. That's got to be number one, I think. If we're just talking about the stakes, yeah, we're talking about it. Like uh, again, this is a fight to the death. We have the reigning champion who hasn't been defeated in years. We have this. The first American person who right. has a chance to win. Like, that's an incredible Somebody might and, die. And he's there carrying on the lineage of his mentor whose son died. That story like, comes out. Forget you know, about it. You write that. Oh, get, my God. That's a that's a 2,000 word feature. And this is Chong Lee coming off of having just killed his second combatant right. in the tournament. I, I That's, that's got to be I'm my I'm still number. going with the soccer game in victory. <laughs> mm, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in that. Look, this is, this is for me. What are I'm you talking do, about? They... They had to beat the Nazis, and then everybody escapes, and everyone in the crowd breaks through the walls. I mean, it's a big story. Come on. I, it's that would have been a good one to be It's at. a good story, but I got to say, it's not It's not like this one, the hype surrounding it would have been huge. The Nazis versus the prisoners game, you're like, ah. <laughs> yeah, like the Nazis are going to roll <laughs> over exhibition. these guys. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's more about the escape. It's less about like the, the, the game itself. The excitement yeah. leading yeah, yeah. up this to the This one event. is just like hype, hype, hype. How about Shoot Loud and Swain? I don't even know what that is. Vision Quest. No. That one's pretty big. That was first. That you was never saw Vision Quest? Mm-mm. Oh, no. Mm-mm. All right. Can you watch that for me? No, watch Matthew, that. That's peak. That's Matthew Modine's It's the greatest Apex wrestling Mountain. movie of all time. Oh, oh, that one. I think Is that the one where he like climbs up the thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've seen clips of it. Oh, <laughs> you're oh so, yeah. You're so excited. Oh, that's a great no, one. No, give me Chong Lee versus Frank Dukes, number one. Give me uh, Sidney Dean and Billy Hoyle versus the King and Duck Ooh. for number Ooh. two. 
Give me. I don't know if you would have to pay for that one. You probably not. Probably just kind of wandered over to the show side up to the court. And my third pick is give me the uh, give me the title game. Friday Night Lights. How about how about High School Texas? Yeah. High school. How about Doug and Kate for the uh, doubles figure skating gold in Cutting Edge? <laughs> wow, <laughs> coming off Olympics drama. I'm ta- his hockey career in tatters. He switches lanes to become a figure skater, and they win the gold. I would I would go Blades of Glory it's over over that the one. slap shot. Oh. La- the slap shot title game where it's just going to be a brawl for three periods would have been fun to go to. <laughs> My honorable mention fourth place the the uh, bobsled race and cool runnings. I want to see that. Oh, uh, well, get me down there. Also, you know what? I- actually, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most hype has to be, um, like a dozen dead racist baseball players coming back to life to play a Go baseball field dreams, game cornfield. in a cornfield. Yeah. That's a good pick. Good I one. mean, this is like everything you know about reality has been overturned. Guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to one-up it. Give me Snake <laughs> in the basketball pit when he's got to go court to court 10 seconds to make the shot, and he's gets, it gets harder and harder, and it ends with him doing a full court shot, Yeah, and then they still try to kill him. This one's for Shea specifically. Yes. Best Paco movie performance ever, Bloodsport or Bad Boys? Who's the king of the Pacos? Oh, Blood in, blood out. Paco Aguilar. Oh. El Gallo Negro. I forgot about that one. I just I was thinking that, that's, so that's the. That's number so one. He's number one. Who's mm-hmm. number two? Number two is Paco from Bloodsport. Over Paco from Bad Boys. Yeah. I think so. He does Which Bad Boys are you talking about? Sean Penn Bad Boys? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Sean Penn Bad Boys. Sean Penn Bad Boys. <laughs> it's a dark movie. Yeah. It's a great movie though. Yeah. He, t- he fills this. Ben and I watched uh, the last. <laughs> I fast forwarded one scene that yes, I, there's a bad scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Filling the pillow sheet with the soda cans. Oh my god, that's tough. Is the, the, the exploding radio? That yeah. is wild. It blew my mind when I realized that that is the guy who grew up to be the guard in Shawshank. I was like, oh no wonder he's that way. And then Look he ended up in uh, in Billions. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he got his life together. Yeah, he's one of those guys. Which real life MMA guy would be the best blood sport character? Conor McGregor. Yeah. Right, you need you. This is what you need. You need Conor McGregor. Like, we're gonna reboot it. You need Conor McGregor in the in the Jean Claude Van Damme role. That's where my mind was going as well. You need Nate Diaz. He fi- Conor McGregor finds out about Kumite. He's in, and he's can like, Con- I'm just doing this. Here's the issue, though. Or can mobsters Conor- are making him do it. Here, can Conor McGregor <laughs> do like the humility required for the Frank Dukes character? Yes. No. Yes. You think so? No. I, think, I think so. Did you watch his documentary? He's like a tender guy when he wants to be. He meet, he listen. He meets Arnold Schwarzenegger in the documentary, and he like freaks out about it. Arnold Schwarzenegger says, "I'll be back line," and he like melts. It's great. It's wonderful. Conor McGregor, give me Nate Diaz and Rampage Jackson. Okay. Was this the biggest choke job in sports movie history? He's he blinds Jean Claude Van Damme. Van Damme. Mm-hmm. He blinds him. The guy's blind. In a very small Kumite space. He's already killed somebody, broken somebody's leg, and put somebody in a coma. And he can't finish him off. I don't think this is a choke job. Not a choke job. You're not blaming me. I'm just, we're doing first take next day. I mean, this was part of his training. You don't think Max Kellerman's killing him the next day? That's just incredible. I mean, Sean Lee, you have him. That's incredibly bad luck. Yeah. That you blinded the guy, and it turns out trained he trained for years blind. to yes. fight blind. I think it's Ray Jackson's is more That's of a, a choke. choke. That's a legitimate choke, okay? Because he had it. He had he had he had Chung on the ropes, and then he's just like, oh, "I killed him. He's That's, dead." That's uh, we were talking about Reggie. That's Reggie doing the bow, right? Yeah, and then the guy, and then Tony was it Tony Kukoc hit the shot afterward? Yeah, yeah. You have three kids. I feel like you could do this. Why don't you do it with one of the twins? Okay. You just do the blindfold training thing that they did with with Van Damme in this movie and have him like walk around the table with the blindfold serve, like see how much you could actually, and then compare him to the other kid and see if this actually would have worked. Okay. Good summer project for you. We're going to try that. Just put blind, just be like, you've got to, you've got to serve everyone dinner while we're at this blindfold. It, I just don't feel like it would be like in two days- Jean Claude's like, yeah, I'm getting this down, man. It's like I don't even need eyes. I don't think it was two days. I think it was a it was a long time. 
The montage stretches years. New like, York Times bestselling author Shea Serrano accused of child abuse is <laughs> blindfolding his children and making them serve and then meals. I feel, because I he loves them in blood sport. <laughs> <laughs> is, ben, is Ben in karate or like jujitsu or anything like that? No, he just wants to fight people for real. Oh, we, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> we put the twins in karate. He want, like he wants to do MMA. He's out on karate. He's like, I want to actually do stuff. We put <laughs> we put the twins in karate when they were young, like six or seven. And they loved it. It was like, because you show up and the first day you're just doing flips yeah. and twists and you're like punching this like plastic paper or whatever. And they kept going, they kept going. And then eventually it got to like the sparring session. And they hated it. They didn't want any part of it. And one of the boys, Braxton, was there. And he was like, he's super shy. He does he doesn't like touching other kids. He don't want any part of that. And he uh they called him up there, the sensei did, and they're trying to get him to fight, and he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do it. He just refused to hit him. So they gave him these like styrofoam swords. They're like, okay, hit him with the sword. The other kid gets a sword. And the other kid fucking just as soon as they said fight, he just fucking whopped Braxton in the chest. And Braxton threw a sword on the ground. He screamed like John Claude Van Damme in the movie. <laughs> ah! And then he charged at the kid, grabbed him on the floor, and was just like, ah, ah. He got like three or four solid shots in before the sensei pulled him off. And we were like, no karate Maybe for you. Is, yeah. <laughs> no karate for you. That sounds like what would happen to my son. Yeah. I don't I, know if it's a good idea could, for our I, sons to ever I meet I couldn't around. believe what I was watching. So if you were blinded by an illegal substance. Well, it's salt. If would, it's salt, it's fine. Your, would your strategy have been to do sweeping roundhouse kicks as part of the um, blind? Maybe he's over there. Just all around the, yeah, like, all around the what, mat. What's your strategy at that point? You can't see. I mean, I, th I actually think that's pretty good because it's that the, plat the fighting platform is not that big. Mm -hmm. I think so he you, falls off in real life. Probably. Think so? Yeah. Because there's a couple points where he's, he's backing up. Again, he's trained for this. He touches the ref. Yeah. He's trained for this. He's Fair activating points. all of his senses. He's yeah. all right. Any he other smell, he questions? He can smell them. Anything else? Did we answer every question you had? I, we, I have a thousand of them, but I, th I think I would like to keep them to myself. This is going to be, uh, I can't wait to see how this plays out. Who won the movie? Oh, man. Chong Lee. Yeah, Chong Lee. Chong He's Lee. iconic. In, okay, in I thought it was Chong Lee too, and <laughs> I thought I was like going to be out on a limb. No, no. Because this movie, it gets Jean-Claude's career going, and he has like a 10-year run, and it's a Jean-Claude movie, but I just feel like Chong Lee wins the movie. Yeah. yeah, he's one of this is one of the best sports movie villains ever, if not number one. And I can't think of this movie and not think of him. Yeah, he's up there for me. Yeah, incredible efficiency. If they remade this movie, would it be good or bad for you? Is is Bolo Young Chong Lee again? He's probably he's oh, like you know, sixty five. Probably does, now, doesn't yeah, have a liver. Probably yeah. I'm guessing. At no, this, this is this is good if you remake it. You get Eco from the raid. Oh in, shit! In this movie, and you like let let him do the fighting stuff. Like, I'm in. The whole concept of this thing's happening in some weird place, it might be real, it might not, but I'm going to go see what it is, and then it turns out to be real, underground, whatever. I I think that should work every 10 it's years. A, it's a classic. It's a classic. It arguably could have been like a Fast and Furious setup for a movie. Where it's like one of the guys in the gang has now fallen into this world. It's a classic setup along with the most dangerous game. Like we're going to hunt human beings in this, like on this island. They're setup. just, that's a new movie that's keep, coming out. You'll you be just, seeing that. Yeah. You just can keep recycling that every five to six years. Just give me a new hunting, hunting humans, hunting humans and a new, you know, martial arts tournament somewhere in the world. Hmm. Shea Serrano, Jace Concepcion, a pleasure. 